Hi, it's Paris from Epic Reviews, the tech channel, and there's an exciting astronomical event that's going to occur next week. On February 15th, an asteroid, which uh, for now is being called 2012 DA14, is going to pass very close to the Earth. It's actually going to pass about just over 17,000 miles out from the surface of the Earth, which means it's, at its closest point, will be closer to the Earth than many of the satellites that we have in orbit. So that's close. Now I was hoping to have a chance to see it because it's a really cool event, um, and especially when I heard it was going to get up to magnitude 7.4, which even though it's a little bit dimmer than what you could make out just with your own eye, just even with a pair of binoculars you should be able to see it, which is great for people in Australia and uh, Southeast Asia and Eastern Europe because they're on the side of the Earth where it's going to be dark when the asteroid is doing its passing. Over here, when it's at its closest point here in North America, we'll probably have a nice sunny day. Here's the map of the best viewing areas, which you can see will be here, Southeast Asia and over here in Eastern Europe. So good on you guys. Uh, over here in North America, there may be a chance to see it uh, later on when it's on its way back out into its own orbit. And that will be after 7 p.m. Eastern Time here in North America. The problem is it's going to be much fainter then. And of course, the excitement's already happened. It's already done its uh, pass and it's on its way back out. I'm going to go take a look. At that point, I don't think binoculars are going to do the trick. And uh, the difficult thing with observing it with a telescope, which is really what you need, something with a uh, uh, whole lot of light gathering capability so you can see it when it's that faint. The problem is, even with this on a, on a mount, that uh, an equatorial mount with a drive so that you can put it, it's pointed at something in the sky once it's set up and it'll track it, is that this asteroid is going to be not following what you normally see in the sky. It's going to be moving across it. So even if you were to find it and get right on it and, you know, have this track, it's not going to track the asteroid. It's going to track the stars in the background. So there's a chance of seeing, you know, some little speck moving across pretty quickly. That's worth looking for, so I'm going to go out and take a look. And of course, later in November, at the end of the year, there's Comet Ison, which may be the astronomical event of the century, because that's supposed to be so bright you'll be able to see it in the daytime. And, and for that, surprisingly, you don't really want to go out and get a big telescope. What I'm actually thinking of doing for that, of course, I'll look at some in the telescope, but to really appreciate it, you need the wider field of view. And these binoculars just aren't going to do it. They have these uh, giant binoculars now that um, have for some reason become very inexpensive, I assume, because they're all made in China, but still with good optics. And they're, they're basically like these, but much larger with very large uh, lenses. And so they gather a lot of light and they have around like 15 times magnification. I'll put a link down below in the video description. When I get them, I'll, I'll do a review and put a link up here. So if you want to watch and see what you think, um, I'm hoping that they'll work real well for comets and maybe for the next asteroid near-Earth flyby, I'll be all set and hopefully be on the right side of the Earth at the right time.